Yeah, I mean, this is a film about, uh, you know, it's one of the great movie topics, obsession, mm -hmm. you know? And I think one of the reasons that that, that, becomes, uh, that becomes such a rich topic for filmmakers, especially somebody like Gray, is that it takes a certain amount of obsession, I think, to pick up a camera and do it, and especially to make something on this scale. Mm -hmm. So you get a certain degree of alignment between what you're seeing on, with, with the degree of obsession you're seeing on screen and the kind that brought it to the screen, if that makes sense. I mean, it makes, it's something, because I, I interviewed uh, mm -hmm. Gray about this film. I mean, it's something he more or less admitted because he, he yeah. spent, he started working on the script, I think, before the book was published. I think mm -hmm. he may have started from a galley and basically tried to get it made repeatedly. Uh, first with Brad Pitt, who ended up, whose company ended up producing, basically making this movie happen. And then years later with Benedict Cumberbatch, and then mm -hmm. finally with uh, Charlie Hunnam. And uh, I think came to very deeply identify with Fawcett as this guy who not only is obsessed with these things that keep, basically all of his expeditions are failures to some degree. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, even when they succeed, people die. It's a very yeah. Herzog thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think about Fitzcarraldo, you know, where there's this, um, there's this conflation between the degree of effort that went into making the film and the actions of the characters on screen. I think there's a lot of that in this as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's cool about Grey, and, 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 and I sort of, uh, I was sort of a little bit of a Grey skeptic until The, the Immigrant, his mm -hmm. last film. It's a wonderful, um, uh, it's my favorite film of probably the last five years. So if you haven't seen The Immigrant, please do. Does it have... Does it have competition now? Um, I actually still think the immigrant is is better. Okay. Um, there are to me there's a there's a top tier of of Gray. <laughs> this is yeah, in yeah, the top yeah. tier. Well, I think with the immigrant, he just he sort of uh, started leaning heavily into his sort of uh, obsession with older modes of movie making mm -hmm. and the sort of older scale and quality of movies. He's a classicist, and I feel like people use that that term as sort of a band aid when uh, often when talking about filmmakers like, for example, Clint Eastwood sort of as an excuse for some of their stodgier tendencies. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that you can use it pretty purely when talking about something like this, which has the values of uh, a sort of older, more ambitious American epic, but not necessarily the look or feel. I mean, mm -hmm. unlike a lot of filmmakers who uh, are sort of obsessed with the movie making of the past, uh, Gray doesn't put any of that in quotation marks. Yeah. You know, this is not a movie that re necessarily re directly resembles anybody else's movie. He's not quoting anyone else. He's not... Uh, well, he is quoting, but he quotes what, no. what other... I feel like the reason is because Gray is... Um, he's obsessed with the kind of cinema that the filmmakers of the 1970s were obsessed with. Mm -hmm. You know, he quotes, he quotes 50s films. He mm -hmm. quotes silent films. And so it is, and that's authentically what he's what he's interested yeah. in. I mean, I when I guess I mean it's just not blatant homage. Yeah. a lot of it. I mean, there is there's there's a shot that we've we've talked about that's a, a pretty wonderful uh, homage to Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah, where there there's a there's a match cut that yeah. we see that uh, just this beautiful moment there that very clearly is is uh, serving the same function that the that the famous. The, yeah, the, the mat. Yeah, the cut the with match. the match to the to yeah, the sun yeah, yeah. in Lawrence of Arabia serves. And, but again, it's that's an earlier generation of filmmaking, yeah. and so his films, you know, the shorthand way of saying what they feel like is to say that they feel like American movies from the mid to late seventies. Yeah. I think but, it's about the values. It's yeah, not about but, the look or feel. It's about yeah. what we used, to, like these filmmakers used to value. And yeah. and uh, I think w what is so enriching about this movie is that it basically uh, takes a, a, a sort of intimate small scale character study and mm -hmm. puts it in the middle of this giant sort of decades spanning story of adventure and, and exploration, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, it does, it is set from, I think it starts in 1905 and by the end it's like the, the mid 1930s, yeah. I think it's implied. So it's covering a very long span of time uh, and many different social layers. And yeah. this is a film that's very aware uh, of, of things like class and, um, uh, and, and even sub, these little sub, uh, classes, you could say within within the hierarchy. I mean, yeah. that's what you get. You you get a, a, all of this stuff about basically upper crust social life at the beginning of the twentieth century before you get to the jungle.